Welcome back, all of you amazing and creative people, to the Daz 3D channel. My name is Steven, and this is episode 3 in our mini series all about creating cinematics like the one you're seeing right now in Unity using Daz 3D assets. Last time we set up our scene, we got everything ready to go, so now we are actually going to be diving into timeline. I'm going to be showing you how to sequence animations with your character, move around the camera, create your shots, and do everything you need to structure out your cinematic, just like the one you're watching right now, which is actually rendering real time in Unity when I recorded this footage. So that said, let's go ahead and jump right in. We're going to get started off today at Mixamo.com. If you've never heard of Mixamo, it is a really cool Adobe product that is totally free uh, to use. And you'll have the ability to use any of these animations on any personal or even commercial projects. So this is something pretty cool. Uh, if you come over here, if you don't have an Adobe account, then you can sign right up at Mixamo.com. As soon as you get logged in, you will see a wide collection of animations that you can preview in these thumbnails. And then on the right, we have the character where we can kind of observe how they behave once we uh, apply them. You can look at it from different angles. So see here, I'll go ahead and apply this dancing animation. And there it is. We can see it frame by frame. And we could go ahead and download it if we're happy with that. Or we could also tweak some of the settings to get uh, maybe a little bit different results or to only use a piece of an animation. So I'm just going to go ahead and search for a walk animation and try to find something that I think will work for the cinematic that I'm going for. Feel free to use any animations that you want uh, or you can use the same one I choose to follow along. When you find an animation you like, you may see uh, where it was moving like this one was, uh, continually moving forward and then jumping back to the starting position. Uh, you can check in place like I've done to preview it. Um, in some instances in a video game, if you were using uh, programming to control how fast and the distance the character was moving, uh, you might want to check in place. Um, it's great for previewing for what we're doing. We are going to want to make sure that we don't have in place checked when we export. So if you are using it to help you preview the animation, make sure that you uncheck it before you download the animation. The other thing you could see me doing here is playing with the uh, arm space of the character uh, just to make sure that the arms aren't passing through the character's side. If you'd like, you can actually upload your own character. So you could try to upload the Daz character if you export it as an FBX. Uh, I did try to do that. However, this time it uh, struggled to upload and ultimately it didn't work. So feel free to try it out yourself. Uh, that said, it does work just fine uh, without uploading your Daz character. Um, because we marked the character as humanoid in the last episode, we will be able to use any humanoid animation inside of Unity. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uncheck in place. Then I'm going to click download, make sure that I have the FBX for Unity, and then go ahead and download it. And that is all I have to do to get this animation from Mixemo. Let's hop back into Unity. We're going to go into our hierarchy, create empty. All I'm doing here is creating another header for myself to keep me organized. Again, this is optional, though I do recommend, especially for larger projects, building some type of habit that you like that helps you stay organized in your hierarchy. It will save you so much frustration down the road. Okay, next I'm going to create another empty game object. going to name this game object timeline. 
And then I'm going to move it under my timeline header. Next, I'm going to go to sequencing and timeline to open the timeline window. I'm just going to move it down here for now so it's easier to view what we're working on while we create the timeline. So you'll see here that it says to create a timeline asset. So with the timeline game object selected, we'll press create. And there you go. It has now given us a timeline asset where we can store all of the information that we're going to use to instruct Unity how to play our cinematic. So as you can see, we have some stop, start, rewind things to help you play back. We also have this plus button here where there's various tracks. And tracks are the different tools that you have within Timeline to be able to sequence together your scene. So I'm going to go ahead and click uh, for an audio track and then an activation or sorry animation track. An animation track stores animations and audio is what will tell Unity when to play specific sounds. Okay, back in my main asset folder, I'm just creating some folders here to help keep me organized. So this is where I'm gonna put the animations that I got from Mixamo. Um, we're gonna go ahead and also, I just wanna keep things separated, like my timelines, my audio, stuff like that. So that's all I'm doing here. Um, also moving the terrain into a folder just to try to keep things a little cleaner. Okay, in the animations folder, I'm going to go ahead and drag in the file that I downloaded from Mixamo. I'm going to click on it to expand it. Then I'm going to click on the animation itself. Well, first, actually, let's click here and under rig, make sure you set it as humanoid and apply. Once you've done that to both of them, I recommend opening it up, selecting the animation itself, and making a duplicate of it. On a Windows, you could do that with Control D. So what this is doing is separating the animation itself from the rig and other information that was downloaded from Mixamo. I just want the pure animation file. So I am going to just make a folder here where I can store the original Mixamo files in case I run into any difficulties, um, but I just want to easily be able to access the animations themselves. So all I'd have to do is now drag an animation in and it will apply it to that animation track. And then of course, select your character so it knows uh, what you are gonna be animating. So right now, when you first apply it, you may see strange things happen to your character. So my character's move to another position, is floating in the air, and that's okay. You see if I take it away, she comes back, I add the animation, she goes there. So what you need to do to fix a problem like this, if your character is moving to weird places, is go into the animation itself and make sure that you check a loop pose. That's gonna, doesn't solve the issue, but it is important. We're also gonna bake into pose um, some of these other transforms and I'm gonna set the Y transform to the feet. I'm also going to come in and just grab my character and make sure that I have it positioned where I want it to be. So when you're selecting the actual track itself, 
if it, none of those other fixes have helped, what you can do is also just grab uh, using the movement here uh, to place your character. This is going to give your character the proper position when the timeline begins. No joke, when you first get started in timeline, it can be really frustrating trying to get your character to be positioned and to work the way that you want. Hang in there, just experiment a little bit and try to get a hang of how it's working. I wish I had a better answer for you other than to say it's going to take a little bit of practice and endurance. Okay, so after a little bit of troubleshooting, I came across something really important that we need to make sure that you do. So with your animation dragged into the animation track, you've got your character selected so it knows what is animating. Make sure you go and select your character and have apply root motion checked here. And then the other important thing is that, like I told you, when you downloaded the animation, that you unchecked walk in place. If walk in place was checked, even activating root motion would prevent your character from being able to move forward. Another helpful thing you can do is split your screen like this so you can see the preview game mode while you're working. I find that really helpful. So what I'm going to do here is add an activation track and put our main camera. So whenever it is marked active is when Unity will be using that camera to render. So you can see here once we go past its base of activation, it says that there are no cameras rendering. We can also add an animator for that camera so that we can move the position of the camera. So in order to do that, I'm going to click on this red button here. This is the record button for the animation track. So what this will do is record any movements and which frame we request that movement to take place on. And then Unity is going to use that information to create an animation that controls our camera. So see, if I select the camera and then just move it a bit, it puts a little diamond there, which is a keyframe. And this keyframe is going to tell Unity the position that we want the camera to be during that time. So what I'm going to do is undo that. I'm going to copy the coordinates, move it up, but then I'm going to repaste the coordinates. So that way we still get a keyframe without actually having moved the camera at all. Then I'm going to progress along in the timeline to a point where I want the camera to have moved to a new location. So I'm coming forward just a few seconds and now I'm going to move the camera up. And the cool thing is with the game preview, I can get a feel for what this could actually look like during the final product. I think I envision kind of an upward and to the side motion revealing um, our character from behind while also allowing the viewer to take in the setting. So the cool thing is Unity is going to interpolate the difference between the two positions and the amount of time it takes to get from the start and stop position. So now we have an animation dictating how our camera moves. Feel free to do any type of movement you want for your own shots. You can edit or do completely different shots than I'm doing. This just seemed interesting and exciting to me. Feel free to use the playback buttons to test what your cinematic is looking like to make sure you like an animation before you stop recording and save it. I'm pretty satisfied with this for now, so I'm going to go ahead and stop recording. And then what I'm going to do is take this activation track and shorten it down to the length of the animation. This is how I'm going to be able to switch from a different camera to another, helping sequence together my cinematic. Well, you could use a plugin included with Unity called Cinemachine. For now, we're just going to do this manually because I think it's easy enough for what we're doing. So I'm going to have to go and right click in the hierarchy and create a new camera. From there, I'll be able to position the camera wherever I want 
create an activation track and an animation track inside of the timeline if that is what I desire. I think this rising sun is absolutely beautiful. So what I'm actually going to do is rotate around this camera to give me just a wide terrain shot of the sand dunes and the sun. I think this is going to look really cool and I can use it to kind of break up the flow of my cinematic. Feel free to create whatever shots you want that meet your artistic and creative vision. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of you are much better directors than I am. Okay, I'm pleased with the position of the camera, so I'm going to come back into the timeline and create another activation track for this additional camera. Then I'm just going to have to line up the time that it's actually active with where it would fit in my timeline. So here you could choose how little or how long you want to stay on a particular shot. Just by lining them up when the timeline plays, it's going to turn off one camera and turn on the other, simulating uh, switching from one angle to the other. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep repeating this process, creating cameras, experimenting with different positions, adding activation tracks, animation tracks as needed, um, and everything I need to start sequencing together the order of operations and events that I want to happen to create my timeline. Have fun, experiment, and don't be afraid to try something new or interesting. If it doesn't work, you can always go back and try something different. Uh, Control Z is your friend, and I encourage you to use it. There's nothing to lose here. Just have fun and see what you can create. I know this video was a little longer than the others, but there was a lot to cover. I hope that you have enjoyed it. And also, we are not done yet. There is going to be one more video. We're going to go over just a few last things to fine tune your cinematic and get it to look truly amazing. I'm going to teach you how to do post-processing effects, improve your lighting, uh, also the dust particles that you can see flying around. We're going to cover all of that. So please stay tuned. If you enjoyed this, leave a like, a comment. If you're not subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe so you can stay up to date on more cool Daz 3D content. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you in the next one.